Hello there, lovers. I am so happy to see you again. It's been a little bit of time and I wish we were meeting under better circumstances, but this video finna be a bit of a serious one. I wanna talk about some recent harassment and humiliation that I've been undergoing as a result of being a person on the internet. I think it happens to all of us and I've definitely had my fair share of embarrassing moments online. This one in particular really deeply bothered me because it was manipulative and taken out of context and has caused people to throw a bunch of slurs at me um, and stigmatize a space that I've worked really hard to destigmatize. And again, I put a lot out there on the internet and I'm always prepared for all responses, but I'm not prepared for people to twist things and change the narrative into something ugly to try to make a joke, a cheap joke at that. Um, and of course, like to defame or slander me. So. I'm saying all this, but I'm like, when this first happened, I came to my partner, Jared, in tears, and I was just really distraught about it. And he was like, Look, you just gotta see the comedy behind it. You gotta see the irony behind it, how funny it actually is if you do not know us or do not know the story. I mean, from first glance, you're learning about this um, couple who's in an open relationship, and you look down to the related videos, and it says, how I got chlamydia, you gotta see how that's kind of funny, you know what I mean? Even though obviously the story doesn't match up and it's not true, and if they actually took time to watch the video, then they would understand that. You gotta just be able to make fun of yourself and be able to look at the parts of you that, that is funny and ironic, and the things in life that is funny and ironic and just make you laugh, because life is way too short to get hung up over, over things that are not even true. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I really tried. I tried to see it from that perspective. I tried to see the light lightheartedness, the funniness in it, but I don't think it's funny. And Jared was like, come on, just like see yourself out of it. You know, just picture it's not your face. Don't you see the comedy? And I was honestly like, no. And I, I think maybe for good reason for what I do for a living, how I think making a joke out of this, you know, perpetuating a stigma, one, and two, um, furthering the culture that we have, which is to humiliate anyone who comes forward to talk about their sexual health not being perfect, um, to embarrass that person and to put them out there for everyone to point and laugh at. I think the ramifications that that has on a sex positive culture is completely negative and a massive reason as to why the STI rates continue to rise because no one feels comfortable to talk talk honestly about their sexual health. And when you have things like this happen, you kind of get why. So I, I didn't find it funny. So let's just backtrack. So here are these two videos. How I got chlamydia, no, it starts with our open relationship and then it goes to how I got chlamydia. For anyone who's watched this video, this is not news to you or watched those videos, the How I Got Chlamydia video came first months before. And that video in particular was a partnership with Trojan Condoms and MTV for that summer I was doing the Guide to series. And they said, we want you to do two videos that really come from you and talk about why you're so passionate about condom use, you know, what comes to mind. And there was this little voice inside of me that said, tell the chlamydia story. And I'd never told that story before. My parents didn't know that story. Um, I, I told my partner, I told Jared the story at the time, but it was something that was still very private for me because there was that shame and stigma associated with it. Even though chlamydia is a curable sexually transmitted infections and I have zero health ramifications, nonetheless, there's still just this like red scarlet stain that you feel forever. So even though I wanted to share that story because that's what I do for a living, to empower people to think about their sexual health, I just didn't know if I was ready to put myself on the chopping block. But something inside of me said, just do it. So I told the story and at that point I had gotten chlamydia probably about like seven or eight years earlier when I was in a monogamous relationship. At the start of the relationship when we decided to stop using condoms we both got tested. We were both you know had no um, incidences or no positive results that came back and so we decided to have sex without protection. Fast forward to eight months into our relationship, I went and got tested for free. I didn't like go and do it purposefully. It was kind of like a freak thing, like, oh, I'll just go, it's free, why not? And then I found out that I had chlamydia and that's how I found out my monogamous relationship wasn't monogamous. So that was that story. And then fast forward to the open relationship story. That one, again, it wasn't this thing that I was like, I'm gonna tell the world and I want everyone to know. It was 
something that I had had for a year. We had been in that point in an open relationship for one year's period of time and I was on The View and one of the viewers asked a question. They said, hi, you know, I'm looking for a committed relationship but every guy that I date kind of just wants to like leave it in this gray space. What should I do? Should I stay in the gray space with them? And I was like, Absolutely not. There's enough people in this world that no one should be compromising how they want to be loved. If you know you're only at your best self when you have that title associated with it, then that gives you peace of mind. And of course, maybe that gives you social acceptance. There's a barrage of reasons people want to be in a titled relationship. If you know that's what you want, keep looking until you find it. Me personally, I'm in an open relationship. It's what I want. And I'm fortunate enough to have found a partner who also wants that. So I said it kind of like a throwaway. It wasn't meant to be this big mic drop moment, but it ended up being the focus of the rest of the segment. All of the hosts couldn't stop asking me questions. And then I was just felt very like, whoa, this is not what I anticipated that this would be. So when I got home, I asked Jared, who had never done YouTube before ever and never filmed himself ever, I said, would you feel comfortable talking about our relationship on camera? And it took him a month after I asked for him to say, you know what, I think that we can try and do this. And again, I recognized that I was opening myself up for a world of criticism and a world of judgment, but I also felt this is an important story to tell and not a lot of people talk about this out loud and they should. So I did, and in both circumstances, I was right. I was harassed, I was called names, um, people found me on every single platform to tell me that I was a slut or a whore or whatever else they wanted to say, but I brought that on myself and in a way, I had to be okay with it. Why I'm not okay with this meme is that it is manipulative and it's wrong and it's simply not true. I did not get chlamydia as a result of my open relationship. And I understand why people would want to perpetuate that because that makes them feel comfortable. That makes them say, okay, great. That's exactly why I'll never do that thing because it's for evil people who want to be diseased and die early or whatever your conceptions are of open relationships. And so I have worked really hard to destigmatize both of these areas separately to have them can intertwine together in a way that's chronologically incorrect and just all around false and to implicate my partner who has did not ask for that and that's not their story and to have their face on that it bothered me and to boot it opened me up for a whole new world of harassment because maybe 90% of you who retweeted this laughed maybe 5% and I have to say one of the most beautiful things about this experience was seeing how many people stood up for me and I want to show some screenshots of that because I was just that's a dream come true for me for me not to have to be the one to always fight my own battles to know that I'm standing beside an army of teammates who also are passionate about sex positivity and destigmatization who I don't have to be the one you know out there by myself in the field you're there with me so I just Where's my point? Where was my point in all of that? 5% <laughs> of you went ahead and defended me. And then the other 5% of you found your way to my DMs, to my emails, on my YouTube, and called me every name in the book and threatened to murder me. Um, so every time that you do these things, that you're just thinking it's just a joke, maybe fact check it because nobody wants to be made a joke out of uh, on those topics especially like i said it's hard enough to have invited my the truth itself was difficult to share having to defend a lie i just didn't think i deserved that at all and you guys know how i feel about the word deserve um, i know it's an invalid word but nonetheless i just felt that was really unfair and you have to also ask yourself, what kind of culture do you want to be a part of? So if we continue to do this thing where every time someone gets or talks about having a sexually transmitted infection, we laugh at them, we make memes about them. You guys know from the herpes video I did it based on the Usher circumstance that I just, I don't subscribe to that. Because what are we saying to the person who has herpes? We're saying, don't say it out loud because if you do, you will be made fun of, you will be humiliated, and you will be hung out to dry in front of everyone. So what's the other alternative? Say nothing and hope that the other person doesn't transmit it from you. We continue to push this culture forward where no one feels comfortable being honest about their sexual health because the only other visible option is complete humiliation. 
So every time that you press to retweet on this, what message are you sending to future sexual partners of your own or of your friends? You're telling them that like, under no circumstances should you ever reveal this about yourself because once you do, we can't be held accountable for what happens to you or what people say about you because you brought it on yourself. Even when it comes to open relationships, if the alternative to an open relationship or someone who is probably best suited in that kind of relationship, but they don't feel comfortable sharing that, the alternative is to hide under the guise of monogamy, cheat, and end up betraying someone and then try to pin it on that person rather than being able to say, I think I'm just not built for that at this time. But that's all. Let's do a little think space right now. How do we give people space to be honest in a safe way? And how can we uplift a culture that encourages people who have unconventional lifestyles or less than perfect pasts to be honest about themselves without that bring even more embarrassment and humiliation into their lives. I'd love to know what you think. No, you let the shop for camp with no bucks. You ain't trying to flip them cheeks for no ones. No one about to rub the buns for good luck. I get it, girl. Oh, yeah, I get it, girl. Uh, yeah, 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 I get it, girl.